I've turned myself into a pickle. Boom, big reveal. I'm a pickle. What do you think about that? I turned myself into a pickle. I'm Pickle King. They really need to start putting on takeovers after SummerSlam, don't they? Because what is supposed to be developmental keeps on stealing the thunder of what is supposed to be the second, maybe the third biggest show in WWE's calendar. 2015, 2016, it happened. And after what happened last night, there's a very good chance it's going to happen for two times in a row. I'm King Ross. You are my lol subjects, and here are all the WTF mamans from WWE NXT TakeOver Brooklyn Twa. And we kick things off with Kurt Angle and the fact he said that he was keeping things close to his vest rather than he was keeping things close to his chest. Vest is correct here because a chest should not be that shade of red. Either way, he's made a massive whoopsie because if that is his chest, he's starting him off at the Dr. Bloody Zoyberg, and if it's not his chest, that is a loud fashion choice. Somebody call the popo. Sticking with Kurt Angle and next up we have the fact that he called Asuka, Asuka, making Asuka sound like a bloody super soaker. Next up we have your boy Big E and the fact that he was making Charlie Caruso like it was real Ferdinand's World Cup wind up 2006. She was all very handsy. I get the feeling it's something the little Rivington they pulled backstage on poor little Charlie. She was like, nah. Big E was like, nah. She was like, nah. Big E was like, nah. Unless that is, of course, Big E is partially deaf and they were connecting via sign language, and that's not a laughing matter at all. Somebody call the popo again. Next up, we have Renee Young and the fact that she called Jinder Mahal Jinder McCall. Does she think he's Scottish or what? And is this an epidemic sweeping through backstage reporters in WWE? Because remember Eve Marie back in the day calling him Ginger Mahal. All Scottish people are ginger. Well, as we all know, since Jinder Mahal has become a main event level superstar, he's been making a big hoo-ha about his Indian heritage. What does Indian heritage and the name McCall have in common, I hear you ask? The colour orange the top portion of the Indian flag is orange iron brew a Scottish delicacy is also orange and let's not forget that everybody from Scotland even bastard Balamori they're all orange as well it's clear to me that Renee Young has thought of even recalling him ginger she's got the color orange in her head from the flag and iron brew and she has came out with a Scottish surname unless of course and another layer to this onion of a scenario she she thinks that Jinder Mahal is actually related to Bradford City manager Stuart, who was famed for getting pissed and falling off car roofs. Stuart McCall. Next up, we have Bailey. The fact that she claimed her main roster WWE debut came in the Barclays set of the night after SummerSlam 2016, and while that is technically true, well, it's not. As we all know, apart from Bailey, quite obviously, she made her main roster debut as Sasha Banks' surprise partner at Battleground 2016 in Washington. And they have the cheek to say, you always remember your first eh? Ah, ah, Bailey didn't. I don't get this while they were airing two adverts in the pre-show for the SummerSlam pre-show, which is two bastard hours long. Why does it have to be so long? A graphic appeared on the screen with Peter Rosenberg's baldy, baldy head on it. The people on screen but Sam, you're on it, aren't you? He says, yes, I am. Why aren't I on that picture at the bottom? Everyone's like, I don't know. I didn't understand what was happening. The fact that the two adverts happened around 50 minutes apart surely gave those boffins backstage enough time to correct their error, but they didn't. All it made for was pointless commentary, a waste of all our time. I didn't understand what was going on. Was this all the presenters having a bit of jabbery at Sam's expense? If it was, it was sh we all know that Sam is light years ahead of Pete Rosenberg, Peter Rosenberg, whatever the hell he wants to be called. Peter is slimy and very marky, while Sam is a nice young cherub, a very nice man indeed. Just to clarify, lol subjects, that was about Sam Roberts, not Sam Driver, and certainly not about Yosemite Sam. Two what culture signs in the first one of which that big old green one is a classic that we haven't seen for just about a bloody year, or when WCPW started. Now don't for a second thing that the start of WCPW and how things have planned out since it started has hampered your vision of Adam Blompier being the god of fantasy booking. But I'm just saying that we haven't seen one for a year, so 
it might have done. And the second one says Queen Ross, and I'm sorry to disappoint you all, this wasn't somebody emasculating me by calling me a queen instead of a king. That was Felicia Rose saying who she was to all the marks in the arena and all the marks watching on the WWE Network. She is the queen of me. No kids, get away from Roddy, he's boring, man. Troubled childhood, come wholesome family, man. I've never seen that before, have you? Of course you bloody had. Thank God he's good at the grabs, at least he's got that. Who could you really be after is the video editors that put those packages together that all be, in my opinion, told a very bland story, but they were put together very well. Editing like that belongs on WWE Raw. It would improve the show tenfold. Corey Grace, first sentence back behind an XT commentary table and there is a WTF moment. When asked why Sanity are so waxer, he replies, you never know which combination you are going to face. As despite the fact for the entire build up to NXT TakeOver Brooklyn Twa, it was always Wolfie and Dane. Wolfie and Dane. All the way through on the post as they got in the ring, it was always going to be them. <laughs> Bollocks. Obviously, I deal with this sure in chronological order, and this was a WTF moment until it was proven wrong halfway through the match, so that's why it's in here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, heels with the crap masks, turtle power. The powers that be in NXT must think the authors of pain are the drizzling sh because they have them dressed up quite literally in a turtle's head. You get it? The little bit of poo that comes out when you're holding it in. <laughs> However, man, the least they could have done was dress up as one of those evil snapping tails, but they look like they've just come from a bloody Halloween party. How's that gonna be bloody scary? I like turtles. He's not missing, pal. He is dead. Look at him. He's dead as a bastard dawn up there. I never got the rumors about Adam Cole debuting at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn Twar because as we all saw on Being the Elite, he died a sorry, painful, monster-related death. <laughs> the only way you could debut if you were dead is if you're going to represent GFW. <laughs> Ghost Force Wrestling. <laughs> ah. Bollocks. Now then, we can only assume that Eric Young and Akam, maybe, we can only assume they are related because while they were beating the piss out of each other in the crowd, as you can see there, somebody, a man, was heard very clearly on camera in a tone that only a very disappointed, a very angry, a very agitated father can achieve. Tell them both to stop fighting. Why, if you have paid for a ticket to a prestigious event like NXT TakeOver Brooklyn Twa, would you tell them to stop fighting in the midst of a massive World Tag Team Championship match? Only one reason, you're their dad, and not the way Marty Skrull is to you ladies. Look, Mom, I can see myself on the big telly. Sanity wins, I don't care if you like them and you think they're the best thing since sliced brown bread. They beat the Authors of Pain, and the Authors of Pain have never been defeated within WWE. Therefore, WTF Momont. Although we need to have a Momont silence for Nikki Cross, who, of course, was the filling in their biggest, sweatiest, manly sandwich there has ever been. So let's have the Momont now. Ah! Red Dragon back together, lovely, 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 ROH referenced multiple times and explicitly live on WWE programming, something that hasn't happened before. I know it has for New Japan, who are mentioned in the same breath on occasion last night, but it hasn't happened for ROH, therefore, WTF. As we saw at the end of the show, Red Dragon, Adam Cole, beating up Drew McIntyre, ROH taking over NXT in some sort of hostile invasion. Who'd have thunk it? Shit. Smoking a pancake. And of course, this is a WTF moment because Kevin Dunn actually caught the swear, something he doesn't do on the regs. Next up, we have Mauro Ronaldo in the moment. He called an avalanche falcon arrow from a Tommy a f***ing bollock. <laughs> An avalanche Michinoku driver, which if you couldn't tell is a little bit wrong. Thanks of course to Nigel McGuinness for putting Mauro right, but that got me to thinking. That got me to thinking indeed. Mauro, 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 Magro, 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 Maglo, Maglo, Maglo. Maggle, maggle, maggle. They are one in the bastard same. Run away. Nigel claims Ember Moon looks determined. How on earth can he tell that? She looks like she cannot bloody see where she's going. Gimmick change not recognised, lads. WTF moment. Surely here, Ember Moon has transformed 
into Emerald Moon because she's green. <laughs> or further than that, she might have just joined Ultra Beef because there she's got pretty green eyes. <laughs> These streak I didn't think so lads go back a couple of decades Goldberg streak was Goldberg streak come to today Asuka's record breaking streak is Asuka's record breaking streak The streak belongs to the Undertaker and ain't nothing changing that That's just the way it's got to be you dig I mean you know what happens if you try to take take a streak away from us And you know what happens if you try to take take a streak away from him? You just made some other list and not Chris Jericho's list because that list belongs to Chris Chris Jericho in the same vein as the streak belongs to Taker. Woohoo! Asuka kicks out of the Eclipse. WTF never happened before. Huge WTF moment. And in the process, turns into a FIFA player in a moment that gave me life. Seriously now though, just give her a hundred rating on 2K18. Just higher in there with Brock Lesnar, even worse. Higher in there with Shane McMahon because as we all know, Shane McMahon is being pushed stronger than any man has been pushed stronger before because he is the best at everything that has ever been a thing in the history of things. A standing ovation, well deserved for Ember Moon who puts on one hell of a show. She came as close as anybody has to defeating Asuka. What a performance. This was the night where she arrived in NXT and WWE. Well, it was almost a complete standing ovation for Emma Moon because as we saw at the start of the match, three of the four horsewomen were at ringside watching proceedings unfold. However, as that shot there describes, I know, move the red ring that way a bit, then it describes. You see the guy in the yellow shirt, he's on the second row quite clearly compared to the people. You get the picture. They had buggered off. They were interested in giving Emma Moon a standing ovation. They buggered off. What's all that about? It turns out that three of the four horsewomen are massive fans of Shania Twin because guess what? That didn't impress her that much. Seriously though, seeing those three women at the end of the match standing up giving Ember a round of applause would have put the biggest stamp of approval on Ember's performance that is humanly possible. Why wasn't it done? You know when you're a struggling actor, you can't afford anything, you're eating cold bastard beans off your bastard bathroom floor and you're given an opportunity to appear on WWE programming, but you have to have experience as a drummer and you say yes, even though you have no idea what you're doing, then you're carted out there in a bloody skirt with a drum. You don't know what you're doing. 15,000 pairs of eyes are looking at you. Your arsehole wants to fall out, so you clench and it goes all the way through your small intestine, through your stomach, up the trachea and out your bastard mouth and you're dying of embarrassment because you don't know what you're doing well that's him there he is shitting his pants Ood. i know that's one d away from being odd but it's still pretty strange to me but a po <laughs> mcintyre calls this the celtic cross well guess what lads so did fit finley back in the day so did sheamus until he decided to change it to white noise the way the commentators were putting it is if drew mcintyre came up with a move and named it himself he didn't he just named it what it's already been named it's like me going look there there's a bus and you go and you've just named the bus but i bloody haven't it's always been called a bastard bus next up we have mauro who claims that drew mcintyre just had his egg scrambled on the top rope when he got crotched by bobby roo poo roo now i can't have been the only one thinking bloody hell mauro you've missed an opportunity there why weren't they called drew's scotch eggs as we know you've got your scotch egg you got the egg and it's wrapped by sausage meat comparable to your crotch that then of course you've got the breadcrumbs on the outside it's an analogy that works on every single possible level but one question remains do scottish people apart from being ginger have breaded scrotums drew mcintyre wins i think we all saw that coming i certainly predicted it adam cole comes in i think we all saw that i certainly predicted it but the thing we didn't see was cole and red dragon aligning to become some sort of roh invading hostile buggers i mean foof this is gonna make for some interesting television over the coming months what with cole going after mcintyre red dragon going after sanity there's gonna be some cracking matches but wasn't it weird to see a man called cole being cheered on WWE television. I personally didn't know where the sh** or why my watch. You need to head for the bastard border. The end is night, the end is night. F***ing run away, the end is night, night. The hand porn watcher was back at it again. What's the crap with that man, you freak? That's twice in a couple of weeks now. F***ing sort it out, will you? That's it for all your WTF moments from WWE NXT TakeOver Brooklyn Twa. I've been King Ross. I'll see you tomorrow for some SummerSlam. <laughs>